There's one sunbox, which is the, uh, the actually the card management system that that sends EMM and entitlement messages to the cards. Okay. And then the other the other one uh, handles uh, service information and your EPG. So it it FTPs out, pulls across the uh, the uh, the EPG information daily, and we keep uh, seven meg seven days worth of EPG data gets sent to the set top boxes. Initially, when we started, we only had four days. So that's some of the kind of things that we did over a period of time. We, we extended that out to seven days, which was, you know, we have limited amounts of memory in these low-cost set-top boxes. So, the, the, you know, the tighter the code you can write, the, you know, we keep hammering on it and, the, you know, getting to get as much performance as you can out of the box without increasing the hardware cost, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, continue, and the service information, that's how we basically send out updates to the set-top boxes over the cable. So that if you do a box upgrade, it's, a, it's, it's being done in the background. And if somebody puts a box online that has older firmware in it, it checks it and says, hey, wait a minute, I need to update this, you know. And, and uh, when you change channels, it'll automatically reload the... Oh, really? It'll automatically reload it. And so we have that. Also, the EAS information is also sent, um, is injected through the... Um, through the, uh, it's it's actually it's actually put into the stream as, as a service service information, but that is actually done through a uh, uh, through the uh, console. So there's a console port server down here that basically talks to the boxes. Okay. So we can log in remotely and we can look at these boxes through the console. Server. Okay. So that's why they're all IP. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. So you can log into each one. Yeah. Um, we could conceivably. Uh, each box has its embedded Linux and so forth on it. We can conceivably, uh, you can log in directly into the box, but we went through. We chose to go through a console server. It gives us some a GUI information. It also gives us some information on, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, temperature of the building and uh, yeah. We, the EAS goes through here. So it had contact closures from their EES system that goes through here, which then uh, sends uh, commands to these boxes, and then uh, we generate. We generate uh, uh, each box generates the EES commands or tells the box what to do. Theoretically, if any box, if we wanted one carrier to do something different, we could do that remotely. We could update the firmware to these boxes remotely mm -hmm. through FTP. So we've done we've done all of this stuff remotely and. Over the, the last period of time, we've continued to update the boxes and make changes and so forth. And being able to do that, I, I kind of came from a broadcasting background. You know, I was in work for ABC Television, so I realized these things are seven days a week, 24-hour day situations, and you you can't just turn things off and move things around. You know, it's, it's got to stay running. Exactly. Right? So we're, we're kind of used to, you know what I mean. In fact, when we put this in, we said, well, when is it going to go on the air? And they said, it's already on the air. And I went, wait. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we were kind of shocked. But on the back, let's 